Jessica Tavi with us. I'm Anjan Hong for Heart to Heart. A public relations firm founded way back in 1952 by Daniel Edelman has now grown into one of the world's largest with 40 branch offices in 23 countries across the world. Joining me on this edition of Heart to Heart is the managing director of Edelman Korea. Say hello to Mr. Robert Pickard. Nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. Mm -hmm. I understand that your employees call you Bob. Well, I do so. <laughs> sure, please feel free. It's a very informal atmosphere at mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, I see. And, and they took, the, took to the idea well, did they? I didn't want to be known as a title. I wanted to be known as an individual. Mm. And so I wanted everyone to know that my name is Bob, and my clients call me Bob, the employees call me Bob. Mm -hmm. And we try to be as informal as possible because we work very hard in many long hours, and so we don't want to dwell in formality. So I will call you Bob as well. Feel free. <laughs> Now, is there anything more you'd like to tell us about your company? I, I did give a brief mm -hmm. introduction in the beginning. The company's 50 years old, mm -hmm. and I think in many ways the history of public relations is synonymous with the history of Edelman. Mm -hmm. The company's been able to achieve a lot of real milestones that have never been done before in the business. And I think if you look at the expansion of our firm worldwide, what's unique about Edelman is the fact that we're the only major worldwide multinational PR firm mm -hmm. that is not owned by an advertising agency. So we're the world's largest independent PR firm. I see. Which means that PR is at the very center, the very focus of what we do. Mm -hmm. That's all we do. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh. And what sort of uh, services or solutions do you provide to clients then? Well, first and foremost, number one overall is media relations and publicity. Mm. Most of our clients want to hire a PR firm because they want to be famous for something, because they want to be known amongst their target business audience mm -hmm. for something that was not known before. So getting them into the press, dealing with media, uh, talking with journalists, and communicating their story. Oh. Does that involve making commercials as well? Not really. That's mm. the province of advertising. I uh, see. We work with advertising agencies. Like, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. If a company decides that its slogan is going to be, you know, bigger, stronger, and faster, and if mm -hmm. a company wants to be known as bigger, stronger, and faster, that's their advertising message. Mm -hmm. And quite often through public relations, that will be our message dealing with the media as well. So we sing from the same sheet of music, mm -hmm. but in their case, they pay for the time and the space in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. In our case, we deal with the editorial side of the newspaper mm -hmm. or through the broadcast journalist. I see. Well, I thought advertising was, was all part of PR, but mm -hmm. you, you do draw a line between um, advertising and media relations and publicity. Absolutely. I think in recent years we've seen the fall of advertising and the, the rise of PR. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, more and more people know they're being advertised too. As consumers get more educated, an ad is an ad and that there's a sales message. Where mm -hmm. if somebody picks up the newspaper or watches your program on television, now, they know that this is a decision made by a journalist, an independent mm -hmm, journalist, to speak mm -hmm. with somebody about an issue of public concern mm -hmm. or public interest. So there's more weight or more credibility attached I to the see. PR side of the equation. Well, so in a way, it's, it's sort of indirect advertising, but with, with more um, credibility, maybe, with, with more weight? I right? think that's exactly right. I think you have hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. And, and that is why so many more people see PR as a cost-effective alternative to advertising. Mm -hmm. We've done some research that shows that individuals get bombarded by 5,000 different messages a day. Billboards, instant messaging on the phone, mm -hmm. email, you name it. And so our job is to help cut through that clutter um, of what we call continuous personal attention mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that a company, one of our clients, can have its voice loudly heard above that that din of mm. all these competing messages. Mm -hmm. I understand that you offer a service called crisis and issues management as well. What, what is that about? Sometimes a company gets into trouble. Mm -hmm. big, big enterprises, multinational corporations, governments for that matter, they are so large and they, they work with so many products and people and markets, sometimes something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And so a company will call a PR agency in case of one of these crises to make sure that if it involves employees, their families are reassured, to make sure that if it involves uh, shareholders or investors, mm -hmm. um, a confident message is communicated. And so our job is to make sure that when a crisis does occur, mm -hmm. a company's point of view is out there so that um, the bad news is properly understood in the broader context of what the company is trying to say. Uh, um, sometimes that must include media, working with the media as well then. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of companies make what I would regard as a tragic mistake. They just wait for the bad news to come out from um, the media, and they fall behind the agenda, 
um, they say no comment or we have nothing to say, they become uncommunicative mm. and that is uncooperative. This mm. is a modern media society, an information society. And so you've got to be out there in front of the news curve, proactively providing information so that people mm. understand your point of view. Mm. Isn't there though um, a general tendency to sort of cover up crises, to, to keep them mm. hidden? Yes, that, that is very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And we see the negative consequences of that you know, all the time. When somebody tries to cover up a crisis, it sends the public a message, the company has something to hide. Uh -huh. you know, we, uh, there must be something wrong with what we've been doing if we're going to cover this up. And at the end of the day, the truth always comes out. So our advice to clients is to say the, t the truth, to tell the truth from the very start, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that nobody is suspicious about their motivation. Mm -hmm. It's far better, if you've got bad news, it's far better for you to communicate it yourself in a way that people might understand than for someone else to say this bad stuff about that you. That is true, that is true, I see. Ah, okay, so it is important to, to, um, to deal with the crisis at an early stage and be open and, and, and frank about it. Absolutely right. The first few minutes or even hours of a crisis mm -hmm. are the most important time because things happen so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the public relations, the media relations curve is such a steep one for companies in a crisis that mm -hmm. it's really important to grab hold of this and to make sure that it's under control mm -hmm. rapidly. Mm -hmm. What other services do you provide then? Mm -hmm. well, we also do a lot of work with respect to making sure that a corporate image is properly understood. Mm -hmm. um, corporate reputation, image building, corporate reputation management. You know, a lot of companies are thought to be just in business to make some giant profit mm -hmm. and are not concerned somehow with the employees or the communities in which they operate. Our job is to make sure that the benefits of a company are more properly understood. Mm -hmm. um, how many people they employ, the macroeconomic benefits of that company to the country in which it operates. Um, their commitment to the environment, um, their commitment to training and educating their employees. These are some of the things we try to put the spotlight on. Uh -huh. So that, that involves um, um, letting the employees themselves know about the company's intentions as well then, and sort of like in-house communication. Yeah, we call it, a lot of companies will call this internal communication, but we call it employee mm -hmm. engagement. Mm -hmm. Because in the case, especially, you asked about crisis, especially mm -hmm. in a crisis, who is the most credible in terms of being a spokesperson for a company at a time of its crisis, its employees are. Mm. And so we believe in this so-called inside out approach where credibility comes from the center, from the employees, from the unions, from the people who actually work there. Mm -hmm. And I also hear that you provide a variety of training programs as well. Yes, we do a lot of crisis simulation training because a lot of companies can't wait for their first crisis to learn how to master one, or else the results could be tragic from a PR point of view. So our job is to give companies the ability through a simulation workshop to mm -hmm. see all the random factors that come into play so that they can be the master and not the servant of a crisis situation. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing with media training too. Mm -hmm. a, lot of our, a lot of executives have never dealt with the media before personally and so they don't really know uh, what to do. Mm -hmm. And many companies, th these guys are so close or these women are so close to their business, they are uh, unable to take the complexity of their corporate story and communicate it in simple ways that people will understand. Oh. And so our job is to help simplify and to make it easier for people to communicate. In the case they have to be on a program like this and be interviewed. That's right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of people that's an intimidating prospect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, everybody has this thing called the adrenaline gland and mm -hmm. it makes them nervous about appearing on television. Mm -hmm. And so our job is to help reassure our clients and to help make, make them aware of the dynamic of a situation like this so that they feel more at ease, so they can be a more effective communicator. And what you said is totally true. I mean, I know these things, so I talk about them, but the other person sitting on the other side might not necessarily understand everything that I'm talking about. So the, the simplifying process that you mentioned, I can totally agree with you on that. <laughs> Well, if you think about it too, anybody who's going to appear on your program mm -hmm. probably you know, is the most expert in the world in terms of what they are there to talk about. Right. And so that should give a spokesperson in a media situation a great confidence mm -hmm. that they should just be able to relax and tell the story very straight forward, very straight clear. Forward. Mm -hmm. uh,